All right, we have our V-clamp. This base is not fully modeled, but I just wanted to show you guys this because I want to show you how to get to your drawing. So what I have is everything is fully constrained. Nothing can move. This first part is grounded. The screw can, can spin around, and that's the way that it really needs to be. You can put limits like contact sets on something, and we're going to talk about that later on, that it won't blow through something else. Uh, as soon as it contacts it. But you have your assembly. Now in our assembly drawings, uh, we're going to have on sheet one, we're going to have our full assembly, but we're also going to have an exploded view. This is a very simple assembly, so it doesn't really make as much difference, but I'm going to show you how to make a different file for your exploded view so that the assembly stays intact. Also on sheet two, we're going to have the detailed drawings of all the parts that are inside there. So we're going to start out with this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file, and it's going to be something that we haven't done before, and that's called a presentation file. With the presentation file, we're going to create a view. There's nothing else I can do. It's got the V-clamp because I had it open, and we're going to make this a manual. We're going to explode these parts apart. It's kind of like explode in AutoCAD makes things separate, but what we're going to do is we're going to drag them apart so that people can see how to assemble it. That's our exploded view. So anytime any software asks you if, they, if it wants you to do it automatically, it's probably not going to do it the way that you want it to be done. So let's go ahead and say manual here and say OK. And it brought in my assembly. Now what I, what's very important is to go to a view that you want it to be in in that exploded view before you ever start to pull things apart. If you, if you pull things apart and then you go to the view that you want it to be in, things may not be visible, that kind of thing. So you want to have an orientation. And if that's the home button, that's great. So see if that looks good to you guys and then continue on. What we're going to do now, since we have a view in here, here's our explosion. We can have multiple exploded uh, views in one IPN. So we could explode one thing and then we could put another explosion. Explode the next thing. Put another one. Explode the next thing. Alright, so what we're going to do is tweak components. When we do that, the things that it wants us to say are in what direction are we going to slide the components. What components are going to be moving at the same time and you can have more than one. Do you want the trails displayed. What the trails are are the offset lines of where it came from and where it's going to. Sometimes display trails actually you will have lines over on top of lines on top of lines and it's really a pain to get it cleaned up because you will think it's a solid line and it's just tons of lines on top of each other. So I'm going to take off display trails and my direction I'm going to pull this one forward. So I'm going to select and I don't know if y'all can see that but you see that UCS is on there. Z is the direction that it's going to be pulling it. You could change it to Y or X, but usually Z is going to be the direction of the third dimension, so that's where we're going to be pulling that from. We can actually set its distance by putting in a distance, or we can change it. So the component that I'm going to drag is this one, and it's going to take off those constraints and allow it to move in that direction. So that's the only one I want. So I'm going to go ahead and select here off the part and drag it out. And I'll say clear. And what does that do for me over here? Well, if you go underneath the base, you see that I have a tweak of a certain distance. That's how far I pulled it out from its original place. Now, if I cleared it, I'm going, that's going to clear me for my next tweak. This direction might be from the top and this component only, and I'm going to just left click out here and drag it up. Now you can click more than one part and drag them at the same time. So if you have a group of parts that needs to be drug away from the base, you might grab them all. You can grab them over here, so you could use shift and grab everything but a base component and move it all at the same time, then grab the next few and move them at the same time. So when you do that, you don't want to select on the component. You want to select out in space. If you want this to be a certain distance, you can put it in right there. And then you hit clear and close. Now I want you to, to see some things 
that you can do with this. So I'm going to show you a video on that. But if you look at the hex bolt, it has this one. I can change this. You see when I click on that, it gives me my parameter down here. I could say 4. And then that would be exactly 4 inches from where it is. Now I'm going to save this file. That's just how simple this is. All this file is is for pulling things apart. But if I go into animate, and I have some intervals here, and I hit go, it's going to put the part back in and put this part back in. And you can actually record this animation to an AVI file. So you could put rotation. You could have that, that screw rotating, you know, 3,600 degrees. That would be rotating 10 times at the same time as it's dropping down in there, as if it's screwing inside the part. I'll show you where the video is for that if you wanted to go to that extent. It's pretty interesting. But then you can always save that out to an AVI file and put that somewhere. So I'm going to hit cancel here. And that's that's my IP, IPN. That's a presentation file. So I'm going to save this one as this, as an IPN. And now I'm going to open my template. So I'm going to go back to my U drive, and I had this, and I had daily work. I have my Inventor B Proto template. So the nice thing about this being a separate file is I can bring in the assembly file for a view of the whole assembly in the correct positions, and I can bring in the IPN, which will show it in the exploded state. So we're going to use this one. When you have a when you have an assembly drawing, you don't have to have material on this first sheet. The first sheet is going to be the assembly. So all the material may be different. So I'm going to take this one off. Now if you put this interpret parasmi Y14.5 2009 on the first sheet, you don't have to have it in every notes on the second sheet. You just put it on the first sheet, it covers the whole entire drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a base view. And notice that I can put an IPN or an IIM or any part in here. So I'm going to put the IPN in here. I'm going to set it down to, let's say, one half scale. And let's go to the orientation that I wanted. I hit that home button. And I say finish custom view. And there's my exploded view. So I'm going to put this one over here. And I can put this. If I edit this view, I could put it in shaded, no hidden lines, and say OK. Then we'll come in with the, the different colors that you put your parts in. And now I'm going to put another view. I'm going to put in the view from the assembly. And I'm going to go and I'm going to set its style. This is going to be shaded as well. I'm going to set its orientation to that same view so that they can see it exploded and unexploded. So the next thing that you need in any assembly is a bill of materials or a parts list. So when you go to annotate, you get all that stuff right here. So I can say parts list, and it says which one of these do you want a parts list of. It really doesn't matter because they're all they all have the same parts in them. So I'm going to select this one, and it's going to be structured. You could say parts only, legacy parts, or structured with subassemblies. And then I'm going to say OK. And then it made my parts list, and it will snap to anything that you have in there. Now, if you look at this, this is what I named my parts. Because I've done this so many times, I have that many parts in there. But one thing that you might want to do with your parts list, and think about this, is have the parts list title and the headers at the bottom so that as you add more parts, it populates at the top. And you don't have to go back and move your table, your parts list up every time you do that. Because it's going to start to dive down into the title block. So if you double click on this, this is your table layout. When you go to table layout, you can change your heading to the bottom and make them ascending from one upward. And the, the title, this wants to be all caps. And that's another thing that Inventor does is it puts some things in caps and some things not. So I'm going to put parts list, and let's see. And so we're going to say OK on that, and apply. 
Now you see it flipped this way and OK. Now once you have your parts list in, your balloons are going to follow your parts list. So let's say that I needed to edit some of this. If I want to edit some of this, I could go in and just literally take that out. And anything that you edit is going to be in blue. I'll delete that. All right. So this is fine to put this in here for the content center bolt. And now what I'm going to do, you remember that we set up our template to have split balloons. You need to have the quantities. The quantities in the parts list need to match the number in the drawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a balloon in. And I'm just going to select this one. And I'm going to drag it out. Right click, continue. Next one, right click, continue. Uh-oh, what happened to that one? Let's do that one again. I didn't click twice. So it's once to start, once to stop, and right click to continue. And I can delete this one out. One thing that it doesn't check for is if your quantities are still matching down here. So when you have split balloons, it's got the quantity on the bottom, the find number or the item number on the top, and it will correlate to the bill of materials over here. Now over here, if you wanted to edit this, you can say C sheet 2, because that's where the description and all the dimensions are going to be for these. And I could copy this and paste it in here and say OK. And so now I have this directing everything to sheet 2 for the details of these parts. So when I have this done, now I'm going to come in and make a new sheet. So if you go to Place Views, there's a button right here that says New Sheet. But if you also right-click over here where your sheets are, you can say New Sheet as well. It's going to prompt you for everything. So the drawing title of the first sheet, what is the first sheet showing us? The assembly, right? The second sheet is going to be the details of those parts. So the second sh sheet we're going to call details, comma, the clamp. And that's going to give the details of all the parts in the V clamp assembly. And ASSY is the proper abbreviation for assembly. My scale, I'll probably stay with one half scale. The date is today's date, which is that and and I don't need a section this will be two of two so I have that one filled in here if this goes long do you guys remember how to change this to a certain percentage of stretch what we have to do and just to just to reiterate is we're going to edit the definition of the title block double click on whatever's too long and change the stretch down to whatever it needs to be, maybe 80%, maybe 70%. And then finish that, say yes to save it, and say OK, because you've already filled all that in, and then this got truncated a bit, just in length only, not height. OK, so the next thing I do is put down my base view, and I'm going to open any of my parts. Pardon? That's right. Every sheet will be all in one file. You do not make a separate file for every sheet. That's correct. Glad you asked that. Yes? On the left side in your tree, it shows you're on sheet one. Okay, the question was, it looks like we're on sheet one because it's grayed out. But when it's grayed out, it's, we're on the one that's bright. All right, the one that's grayed out is the one that you're not on. So I'm going to look for these parts again, see if I can figure this out. And I'm going to go to 1433 V-clamp base. So here's my V-clamp base I'm going to bring in somewhere. There it is. So I'm going to make this one not shaded, and I want hidden lines. I hope that's right because it's so hard to see if that's depressed or not. 
So I'm going to put this one here, and I'm going to put this one here, and then I'm going to have to have this view over here because it has a hole in the side. So if I change the original one, and I edit that view and take this off, it's going to change all the rest because they're styled from the base view. Okay, so there's one part. The next part is the base view of the clamp. Let's see if I can find that part. All right. There it is. Let's do this one. Okay. So this one I do not want to be shaded. It's showing it shaded, but I don't know if that's depressed or not. So let's go ahead and put this in. This is coming in at one half as well. And I'm going to put this one up here and right click and create. We only need two views of this one. We can get the depth here. We get the whole profile here and then we have to have this one for the hole. So once again, I'm going to go to this one and edit this and take off. I guess that's a default. The last thing that we need is we're going to have to have uh, identifiers for these things that correlate to the parts list. So I'm going to move these up and if you projected your views from each other everything should move together in certain directions. So I'm going to start with some annotation with text and I'm going to put it let's say right here. I'm going to make the title of this, this is the title of the part. The title of the part is always twice the height of your dimensions. So can I say times two? And I'm going to say, hmm, doesn't like that, does it? So 0.24, okay. All right, all right, all right. Don't be ugly. Oh, there, whoo. Okay, the base was item one, right? And that's 0.24. That's the title of the part. I go to the next one, I'm going to change the height to 0.12, and I'm going to put in here underscore notes, so you could copy this from another, another situation. You're going to have to put the notes, the material, and any notes particular to that item. So you might put in here the clamp, or you might just put base, whatever it's named in the... Uh, in the parts list. So the first the first thing you're going to have is material. And then if you have any other notes, you can put those in there as well. Okay? So I've got that one. And I'm going to copy this one. And I'm going to paste it. down here for the screw and over here for this part. All I have to do is change these part numbers and the names. I'm showing you these easy ways, but don't forget to change this stuff. And then this one's going to be item 3. And that's going to be the hex bolt. All right. In the material for the hex bolt, you just need to put the specification that you were given in your callout. So you could just copy that from the other one. You could just put in the specification here. So I'm going to say OK on this one. So something that I'm going to tell you about these two is that this one's going to have symmetry and this one's going to have symmetry. That way you don't have to put two X on everything. So I'm going to select on this view and I'm going to start a sketch. So that this thing will move with this view, I'm going to project geometry of this line right here. And when you create a sketch on a view, it allows you to do that. So I'm going to go on up and I'm going to draw this line straight down. And then I'm going to finish. Oh, I've got to put text in here. I've got to put my symmetry marks. So I'm going to put it out here in space. And I'm going to put in a symbol for symmetry at 0.12 and what I'm going to do here is make it middle center justified. 
The reason that I'm doing that is that's where the grip is, just like text in AutoCAD. So now I can use a constraint. I want to put this point on this line. I don't care where it is vertically, but I want it to be on that line horizontally. Hmm. Let me zoom in. Grab this thing and then drag it down. Now this one doesn't tend to know that it's on that endpoint, so I'm going to make that also coincident with that point. So now it knows where it is. I could grab this and mirror it, or whatever I wanted to do, or I can right click and copy and paste and grab this other one and then move it, make it, I'll move this down here first and then I'm going to make it, look at that, just snapped to coincident when I just moved it right over there. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it down outside the body of the part. Okay, I've got that one. Might make these look a little bit more uniform. I'm going to finish that sketch. Now before I go on though, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to change that to a chain line. That's a center line style. And now I've got that one done. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Select the view, start the sketch, project geometry of this, and then I'm going to draw a line right from the midpoint, which is that green dot, all the way down here, and I'm going to do the same thing. Middle center, now I'm just going to, let's see if I drag it over again from the midpoint, if it'll just snap to it again. Hey, that's pretty nice. So I'm going to copy this one and paste it. I'm going to drag this one over. Let's drag this down here. All right, let's bring this on down because we've got dimensions and things that need to go in there, and you can make these as long as you want. Finish the sketch, select it before you forget, go to properties and make that a chain line as well. Okay, so there are some things that we need to talk about on these two parts uh, that would be symmetric. We know that we have one, two fillets on one side, so we would have to say 2x a radius of 1 over here. That would give us 4 altogether. It just multiplies. Anytime you have a dimension that goes from one side to another side, it's really nice to put a symmetry line because that means it's halfway each way. You don't have to give another dimension that says go over this far and then start from that and get to the other side. So let's go over here and let's look at this thing. We're going to need all of our center lines and all that stuff, but we've got a lot of dimensions in here that might be replicated at the back that are separated by this cut 